welcome to St. Francis of Assisi, American National Catholic Church. Today, we celebrate the third Sunday of Lent. We now invite you to stand and read our celebrant, Bishop Lucy, and join together and sing. Number 639, There's a Wideness in God's Mercy. That's number 639. There's a whiteness in God's mercy, like the whiteness of the sea. There is a whiteness in God's justice, watching His Lord and liberty. There is plentiful redemption in my
God of all compassion, Father of all goodness, to heal the wounds of our sins and selfishness that selfishness bring upon us, you bid us turn to fasting, prayer, and sharing with our sisters and brothers. We acknowledge our sinfulness, our guilt is ever before us. When our weakness causes discouragement, let your compassion fill us with hope and lead us through a Lent of repentance to the beauty of Easter joy. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. the book of Exodus. <coughs> Moses was tending the flock of his father-in-law Jethro, the priest of Midian. Leading the flock across the desert, he came to Horeb, the mountain of God. There an angel of the Lord appeared to Moses in fire, flaming out of a bush. As he looked on, he was surprised to see that the bush, though on fire, was not consumed. So Moses decided, I must go over to look at this remarkable sight and see why the bush is not burned. When the Lord saw him coming over to look at it more closely, God called out to him in from the bush, Moses, Moses. He answered, Here I am. God said, Come no nearer. Remove the sandals from your feet, for the place where you stand is holy ground. I am the God of your fathers, he continued, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob. Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look at God, but the Lord said, I have witnessed the affliction of my people in Egypt, and have heard that their cry of complaint against their slave drivers, so I know well what they are suffering. Therefore I have come down to rescue them from the hands of the Egyptians and lead them out of that land into a good and spacious land, a land flowing with milk and honey. Moses said to God, But when I go to the Israelites and say to them, The God of your fathers has sent me to you. If they ask me, What is his name? What am I to tell them? God replied, I am who I am. Then he added, This is what you tell the Israelites. I am sent me to you. God spoke further to Moses. Thus shall you say to the Israelites, The Lord, the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, has sent me to you. This is my name forever. Thus am I to be remembered through all generations. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <laughs> Yes. 
has made known his ways to Moses and his deeds to the children of Israel. fig tree, but have found none. So cut it down. 
Why should it exhaust the soil? He said to him in reply, Sir, leave it for this year also, and I shall cultivate the ground and ar around it and fertilize it, it, so that it may bear fruit in the future. If not, you can cut it down. My brothers and sisters, the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So we all know, in October last year, Hurricane Sandy left us a path of destruction. About 113 people died. The property damage caused by this hurricane was estimated to be 71 billion in the U.S. alone. If you turn on the news, you would, you would have seen how the subways are, were filled with water, cars on top of each other, and the boardwalk on Seaside Heights completely decimated. Many households were without power for days. We felt the after effects even weeks after the hurricane. The subway system took a while to be operational, and we had to wait in line for hours to get gas. Knowing all these bad things that happened, is this God's punishment? You know, I did a Google search to see if some people think that Hurricane Sandy is God's punishment. But uh, one pastor thinks it is. He suggested on his blog that the LGBT community and President Barack Obama's support for marriage equality are to blame for Hurricane Sandy. He also wrote that God is systematically destroying America. What if God would punish us in our lifetime based on the gravity of our sins? If God works this way, perhaps I would be one among those who have died in the earth. We hear in today's gospel of bad things that happened. Some Galileans were killed by Pilate soldiers while they were worshiping. Some biblical, some biblical scholars think that it was Pilate's violent suppression of a demonstration in Jerusalem. Demonstrators gathered in the temple to protest Pilate's use of the temple money to construct new aqueducts. Pilate then sent armed guards, armed soldiers among them in disguise. And, a, and at a signal, the, so, the soldiers dispersed the mob with clubs, killing many more than Pilate had anticipated. Also in the Gospel, we hear about the 18 people who died during the construction accident in Siloam. Some biblical scholars think that the tower being constructed was also a part of those same aqueducts. It was very popular opinion during the time of Jesus that there's a direct line of causality from people's sufferings back to their personal sins. If people were sick or disabled, it was believed that this was the cause of their sin. There was no scientific method, and every misfortune was, come, was somehow caused by something supernatural. But Jesus responds to the crowd, Do you think they were greater sinners? By no means. But I tell you, if you do not repent, you will all perish as they did. Does Jesus tell us that God is a God that tells us to repent from your sins or you will perish? Or does God tell us Repent from your sins because I do not want you to perish. There is a difference in our view of God with, between these two statements. The first, the first statement illustrates a God who is vengeful, a God who enforces justice and punishes those who stray from the path. The second statement il illustrates to us a God who is loving, a God whose mercy is overwhelming 
and that God gives us second chances. Furthermore, Jesus gives us the parable of a fig tree that bears no fruit. The gardener did not cut the fig tree down, but said in reply, to wait for a year. He will cultivate it and fertilize it, for it may bear fruit in the future. By this parable, Jesus reveals to us the nature of God, that He is a loving God, and that He does not bring misfortune based on the gravity of our sins. Jesus' call to repentance is an act of love. God so loved us that He gave His only Son as a ransom for many. Repentance, on our part, is not an act of denial. God demands it, not because God is a party poor. We are God's children, and He knows what is best for us. He knows that sin will eventually corrupt us and will ultimately sever our relationship with Him. God's grace will never be denied from us as long as we ask for it. Repentance is our loving response to God's love because this is what restores our relationship with Him. Throughout history, we see how God continually sends His prophets to remind us to go back to Him. We hear in the first reading, God sends Moses to deliver the people of Israel. Perhaps at this day and age, God sends us friends, our friends and our family. When, when they admonish us oh, because we did something wrong, instead of us focusing on their criticism, we, I think we should focus on their loving concern for us. God created us not to be miserable, but for us to be fully human and fully alive. We can only be this way when we have a relationship with God. God will never give up on us. Don't give up on God. Let us stand and tell each other the story of our faith as we say we believe in one God, the love of the Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, one in being with the Father, through him all things are made, for us and for our salvation. Down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he was born of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered, died, and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in fulfillment of the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit. The Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, with the Father and the Son, He is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken to the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We go to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. As a people dependent on God's mercy and compassion, we offer our prayers and petitions. Our response for Lent will be, Lord have mercy. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. For the College of Cardinals, as they elect a new Pope, uh, I'm sorry, a new Bishop of Rome, that the Holy Spirit guides them to choose a person of genuine holiness to guide the flock, entrusted to their care, we pray. Lord have mercy. 
those who work for peace, diplomats and human peacekeeping forces. Let the Lord protect them from harm and open minds to end violence in Mali, Syria, and other war torn countries. We pray. Lord, Lord have mercy. For the American National Catholic Church, that the Holy Spirit makes us to be a beacon of hope to all who come to worship and give us strength to serve the poor and needy and pray. Lord have mercy. For all our elected leaders in our communities, state and national levels, that they would work to relieve the burdens of the widowed and orphaned and make justice their aim. We pray. Lord have mercy. For those who care for the elderly and the sick, that the Lord fill them with compassion for those entrusted to them and for the sake. And are there any whom we should especially remember? James Fellows. We pray. Lord have mercy. Remember that we are dust, and unto dust we shall return. We pray to the one who conquered sin and death, to grant life to those who have died. Are there any who we should especially remember? Well, my sister was there on the sixth anniversary of her death. My father. We pray. Lord, have mercy. Most high, glorious God, we bring you our prayers and petitions, those which we've spoken aloud and those in the depths of our heart. We ask you to hear and answer them as they be for our good, for we make them in the name of Christ your Son. Amen. Amen.
Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands, who prays and glory to God's name, for our good and the law of His church. Lord, by the grace of this sacrifice, may we who ask forgiveness be ready to forgive one another. We ask this in the name of Jesus, the Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. He is right to give your and praise. Father, all powerful and ever living God, we do well always and everywhere to give you thanks. Through our observance of Lent, you correct our faults and raise our minds to you. You help us to grow in holiness and to offer the reward of everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Through him, the angels and all the choirs of, in, uh, of heaven worship in all before your presence. May our voices be one with theirs as they sing with joy the hymn of your glory. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power, God of might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. God of power and might, we praise you through your Son, Jesus. Christ, who comes in your name. He is the word that brings salvation. He is the hand you stretched out to sinners. He is the way that leads to your peace. God, our Father, we had wandered far from you, but through your Son you have brought us back. You gave him up to death so that we might turn again to you and find our way to one another. Therefore, we celebrate the reconciliation Christ has gained for us. We ask you to sanctify these gifts by the power of your Spirit as we now fulfill your Son's command. <clears throat> While he was at supper on the night before he, he died for us, he took bread into his hands and gave you thanks and praise. He broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, Take this, all of you, and eat it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. At the end of the meal, he took the cup. Again, he gave you, and again, he praised you for your goodness, gave the cup to his disciples and said, take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant. It will be shed for you and for all, so that sins may be forgiven. Do this in memory of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. sacrifice of reconciliation. Therefore, we ask you, Father, to accept us together with your Son. Fill us with his Spirit through our sharing in this meal. May he take away all that divides us. 
May the Spirit keep us always in communion with the patriarchs of Alexandria, Antioch, Constantinople, Jerusalem, and Rome. I, your unworthy servant, all bishops, and the entire people your Son has gained for you. Father, make your church throughout the world a sign of unity and an instrument of your peace. You have gathered us here around the table of your Son in fellowship with the Virgin Mary, Mother of God, and all the saints. In that new world where the fullness of your peace will where your fullness of your peace will be revealed, gather people of every race and language and way of life to share in the one eternal banquet with Jesus Christ our Lord. Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever.
Our hymn for communion will be number 471, Hosea. That's number 471.
Let us pray. Lord, in sharing this sacrament, may we receive your forgiveness and be brought together in unity and peace. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Uh, Jeannie did a wonderful job with this homily, right? So very much. I was, uh, I was uh, uh, so moved. I want to thank uh, uh, Jeff and Brother T.T. and the choir for providing such a wonderful spirit at Mass today. I almost didn't want to, uh, to disrupt it with the uh, closing prayer, but we got to go. Right? So, <laughs> so, uh, but I really, it was, it was really so beautiful. As we move uh, more and more closely to the, to the solemn uh, celebration of Holy Week, uh, the music and all of the prayers of the church lead us towards that time. Uh, towards that moment in that contemplation. So thank you very much. Thank you very much. You've really so beautifully done and, and adds to our worship in so many ways. Adds to our worship in so many ways. Um, I want you to know as a parish uh, how much you, uh, you touch people. I, uh, a young woman stopped last week. Uh, she was leaving church and she wanted to introduce herself to me. And uh, we had communicated to each other via email and I know her mother-in-law. And she just delivered her first child. And he was a little creamy, but he's done well. And, uh, and she said to me, uh, um, uh, can I join your church? I never think of this as our church. I think of this as a parish within the embrace of Catholicism. And I said, of course you can. And I said, uh, uh, how come? And she said, well, she said, um, uh, I'm not sure if my son's going to grow up gay, but if he does, I want him to be in a place that will accept him. <laughs> what a wonderful statement to the acceptance of this parish, right? What a wonderful way that you communicate to the whole world that everyone truly is welcome here and truly welcome to participate fully in the life of Christ through his church. It is a great gift you give to this community. Make no mistake about it. It is a great gift that you give to this community. And, and, and that she knew about us and that you feel that way. What a mother's love, right? What a mother's love, right? And so I want you to know that. I pray uh, earnestly for you every day, this parish, because you are an unbelievable witness uh, to the call to God's repentance in which we find uh, the experience of God's love for us. So thank you all very much for that. Uh, Saturday next, we'll be baptizing Salvador, who I think you hear in the back, right? So, uh, so there you go, right? So, uh, so uh, Salvador has a very large family, so we're going to do a uh, we're going to do a baptism on Saturday because I think we'll fill the church, right? So, uh, but uh, but he seems excited for that, right? So, he's, uh, he's, uh, exactly, right? And his two moms will uh, will present him as he begins his life uh, in Christ uh, through St. Francis of Assisi. And I am always very happy to see Kian and Lydia, who are here, right? Who we, who we brought into the experience of, uh, uh, of the life of Christ through the church. So thank you all very, very much. And, and keep up this good Lent, right? Keep up this good Lent. Uh, just like the Jones said on Wednesday evening at 7 o'clock, we're going to have a joint ecumenical experience with our fellows from uh, the Congregational Church. It's going to be a, a, a meditative walking of the labyrinth, and you're all welcome to come. And it'll be at seven o'clock. And uh, it'll be. I'm sorry, six thirty. Okay. And will they enter? At yeah, come. Come. We'll, we'll probably we'll have the chapel open, so either way we'll do it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I want to thank Father Carol and Judy for participating in our marriage prep class yesterday, right? They did a great job in that, right? And uh, uh, Stacey and Oscar aren't here. But, uh, but, uh, but, but please join us for that. I think we did that once last year. We didn't walk the labyrinth with them, but, uh, but it was nice. We'll, we'll pray with them. Uh, them, it makes it sound like they're not us. We'll pray together, we'll pray together uh, in a nice ecumenical way. Thank you, Father Carol, for that reminder. Thank you. We have choir practice after the mass. Those of you who want to join us, please do and stay after the So you don't have to have a voice. You just have to be willing to, uh, to come and participate with us, right? Bow down for the blessing.
The Father, is of mercy, the Father of mercy has given us an example of unselfish love in the suffering of his only Son. Through your service of God and neighbor, may you soon receive his countless blessings. Amen. Amen. You believe that by his dying, Christ destroyed death forever. May he give you everlasting life. Amen. He humbled himself for our sakes. May you follow his example and share in his resurrection. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Mass is ended. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us all go forth, joining together and singing number 444, Lift High the Cross. That is number 444. <coughs>